Hello and how are you? My name is Mikhail Demirat and I welcome you to our 24th video, I think it's 24th, uh, of creating a complete um, inventory management uh, system. In the previous video, uh, we stopped at the level whereby we were able to create our mobile application and uh, we were able to do what? Uh, to create the registration screen so in this video we're going to take it from there and go to higher levels so I hope you've been following I hope you've been practicing uh, because at this point we are now at the level of uh, communicating to the API and I've been taking you step by step without skipping a step so let me go ahead and uh, compile our application and we resume our today's business so our application has finished compiling if this is your first video i recommend you to go to our first video and i mean to the to previous videos and be able to practice from the beginning so i'll go ahead and Okay, so uh, this is the screen, I mean the registration screen that you created. So if you click on the registration screen, uh, that is uh, how it looked like. So uh, if you come to the registration screen, uh, this is the registration screen and we've done that all logic of even uh, submitting and even showing the loader, all that things, all those things have been able to do what? Uh, to do them. So we'll stop at this logic where we could be able to do what? To get the logged in user and uh, be able to get their name. So what we're going to do today now is to save this logged in user in the what? In the local database. So let's first test what we did previously. So if I come here and I put my first name, let me make sure that I'm connected to internet. See, I'm not connected. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with my IDE. Right, I think it's now connected. Okay, so I'll come here and put my first name, uh, John Black, and then put, I mean, sorry, my first name, John, last name, Black, and then go ahead and put my email, John at gmail.com. Then I get my password, I mean, my phone number, 07832046665. And then I put my what my company name, uh, John and Sons, and then put my currency UGX, and then put my password four three two one. For now, let's do that. So that is our simple registration screen. So let's go ahead and put here the console and see what is going to happen in the background. So I click on registration. So it is starting registering, and you see we have here welcome John. So it has successfully registered and uh, here is at the end so if i click on uh, create again so you'll see uh, the email is already registered so it cannot allow us to register the email twice and you can see here the error so the whole point is um we're able not to register a person now we want to be able to log in a person so since uh, I, i'm going to show you, i mean we'll show you a technique so this is a place where we lo were able to get the logged in user with their respective data so since um, since uh, since uh, since uh, what should I say? Since 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 I want to explain something. Uh, since we every time we click submit, it keeps on asking us to do what to get the user. I mean to submit a new email. So what I'm going to do for practicing for practicing uh, purposes. I'm going to put this um, uh, this logged in user as a what as a uh, a global uh, re record. I mean, as a global what as a global uh, variable. So I'll come here outside this and put here the logged in user here. So I do like this and then I equate him to there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check if this logged in user is already having an ID that is greater than one. I should say. Uh, time to log in something like that and then we do the login logic so i say if this logged in user i'm just doing this for the sake of testing 
I know there is no user who doesn't have ID of one. So if it's having ID of one, I just put in the console and say time to log in the user. So I put here print uh, time to uh, to log in the user. So there it is. So that's why I'll be calling that. So this one will help me on keep on submitting again and again. So let me go down now. So I'll get this same variable and then come and put it here. Here. So this variable will be initialized at once and then the, we expect id will be greater than one. Okay, so if I do greater than one, then we shall keep on changing on top of this on the other side, on the top side, and do what? And uh, so we can be able to test and create the user. I mean, I log in the user simply. So there it is. There it is. You can see it. All right. So here we're returning null. So in case it's greater than one. So if I click on create account, of course, it's going to say I. Uh, Reads are not registered, so it passed this one because we had not done that logic, so it says zero. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to check the email and put here one maybe, and then say create account. So, you can see it is successful. So, expect now there is that in this user account. So, if I go ahead and uh, try to click print, I should expect it to, I mean, create account. You see, uh, logged in is already what logged in so it is printing this uh variable so this is a place where i'm going now to do the logic of logging what of logging in the user so what we're going to do right now we're going to need a local database so we're going to need a local database in a way that when uh, we log in someone we should uh, automatically keep them in the what in the local database so uh we're going to use sq flight so if i come here we should be able to have already done some stories about this SQ flight that explain everything. So if I come here, you'll be able to see SQ flight. So go ahead and add it in your what? In your packages as well. So I assume that you know how to add this SQ flight in your in your packages, and I assume you're using this uh, variable startup project that I shared with you. So if you're using this one, that means that SQ flight is already in your what? In your packages. So what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going now to uh, to try to log in the user. So I already have some project that have SQ flight. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this one of them, and then we go through, through it very fast. It will be simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to so we're going to create maybe a function, or you can even like kind of save the user. So we're going to create a function that is going to work on the logic of saving the user. So I can go ahead and, for example, come on top here. So this is the model that we did last time, the mode of logged in user. Okay, so in this mode of logged in user, I'm going to create another what? Another, uh, another, uh, another what? Another uh, function that is going to be responsible for saving this user offline. So this function is going to be returning a string. So in case there is no any error, it will return an empty string. So in case there's an error, it will return the, the, the error in, in that string. So it's going to be string, and then it's going to be a string future a string future, and then I open square bracket, and I say string. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's supposed to be future string and then i just put here save and then open square bracket and then put asynchronous and then return empty by default so this is the place where we're going to put the logic of uh, registering a user so we have some systems where i've already done things like these ones so what you're going to do we're just going to be borrowing some code from there as I explain what every code means okay so All right, so uh, we are on this method of saving. Okay, so this is the place we're going to save the user. So the first thing we're going to check to initialize the database. Okay, so we're going to check the user that, that I mean, we're going to make sure that the database is initialized. So to do that, we shall just simply do like this. Uh, we're going to create a function in utils that we're going to be using for 
initializing the database so i'll go to our utils class you know we have a class called utils where we're putting our utilities in under models so i'll go to the utils class and then i'm going to create a class that is going to be responsible for for starting the database okay so this is the class i mean the function sorry so i'll come here to utils and then i come here and put a function so this is the function so let me go ahead and uh, and then simply say and explain it so it's the, just a static future and then it is returning what uh database okay and then we're going to call it get db you can call it anything we are going to call it the get db and then open bracket and then you put asynchronous and then open curl bracket and then say return and then you say open database as it is here beginning with small letter and then here i put the what our the database name so we're going to put the database name so we can define here our constants okay so we can define our constants for example we can go ahead and put here some constants here on top of static function okay so going to be maybe static file and then we're going to put here app version okay app version so this app version is going to be on top here okay and then we'll go ahead and put also maybe a database path database path okay so i'll show how database path looks like so it is just nothing but a kind of unique name that is representing what your project so i can just simply put here for example uh, a what so the name the, 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 the project is called now uh, inverto track and then put underscore so i can just simply say inverto track one okay so after doing that so let me put the name of our path and uh i can just simply come here and put now like a variable so it should keep on what it should keep on changing like this hope that is acceptable okay so we we'll go ahead okay that is the name of our what of our database then we we'll go ahead and initialize the database we are simply saying future and then you open a square bracket and then put the database that you what that you are expecting to return then put get db and then put a synchronous and then say Retail await I will say open database and then you pass here the what uh, the first parameter you pass the database path and then the second parameter you pass the what the um, the what the version of the database okay so in my case I can say the version is uh, our app version okay Okay. So the one that passes here must be what? An integer the app version. So that is the uh, app version. So the next thing that we do, we are going out to call this method to initialize the database. So I'll come back here and just I call it utils.getdb. So that's going to be responsible for initializing the database and then give us what? Uh, a response of the database. Okay, so I'll go ahead and. Uh, Okay, and then we'll go ahead and now start working on the logic of uh, saving the user. Okay, so after making sure that the database is opened, so the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to initialize the what? Uh, the table to make sure that the, the, the table, we're going to fetch this, we're going to save this user, is really initialized. Okay, so you should just simply come and say, uh, await, and then we're going to put here, uh, method that calls uh, in all right so here we're going to create our table so after making sure that you have initialized the table as I how I've showed you in this method this is how we initialize the table by providing the table path and then the version of the table so this will be returning what a, a table that I've just initialized so after making sure that you have initialized the table the next thing that we're going to do I mean, sorry, the database. The next thing we're going to do is now to initialize the table itself, or we shall be saving these particular records. So this table is just going to be within this method of what? Of um, logged in user.
so to do that i'm going to create a method of this kind uh so i'll go ahead and 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 just scope one by one as i'm explaining everything so i'll come here and just call this method init table so uh since we already have a database initialized so we can give it the db so let's accept a db so we shall it will be accepting a database so here i'll be passing what db okay so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we're going to check if the database is open if does if it's not open we'll send back false so this is going to be future maybe we can say it will turn bull for success and for fail it returns false so you go ahead and say if uh db is not initialized return false so maybe it did not succeed in what in creating the table so after doing that the next thing we're going to do we're going to create a table that is going to an sql that will create a what that will initialize a table so our sql okay so the main purpose of this is to initialize the table of this duo shall be saving the logged in user so all right so now let's go ahead and do what and um create a what uh an sql say sql uh it's going to be a string of sql which is going to be um so it's going to be sql equals to and then you put there create create table if not exist and then primary is going to be a id an integer and then we put username and uh just to just get these values that are here all right all these values and create make sure that they are in a what in a table so let's go ahead and paste them there very fast so i'll just comment them here all our variables so you see how i'm creating this table let me put here a semicolon so you can understand it is a uh, create table if not exist then this table we are going to call it users so we can have here a variable called table name okay we can have a variable called table name so we use this variable to make sure that the table name is uh, is uh, just constant and defined somewhere so you can put here some on top here a variable called table name for this case you can call this one maybe uh logged logged in what logged in user okay that is how you can call this table okay so uh we have to define there the variable so we come back to our sql which is good which which states sql uh equals to create table if not exist and then here we pass the variable okay so after doing that then we say id which is called integer and then it's a primary key aha uh -huh, then we put a comma here okay so i put a comma here you can as well put here in front okay but my design i just will really split here so i can be able to duplicate my lines okay so without any problem so the first thing is the uh, username okay let me just remove this so it can be just there at last uh so the first thing is username okay so the next thing so i remove this one i put all the variables here i put them here in some comment so the next thing is going to be password so i'll come here and duplicate this and put password and the next thing is going to be the name so i come here and duplicate and put the name then put the avatar and then put the remember token and then put the created that and then put the uh, the what the updated art and then put the company id so all of them are making them text i don't want to complicate life and then put here the first name and then put here the last name can remove these ones that have finished and then put here the uh, phone number and then put here the phone number two if it's there and then put here the address and then put there the six and then i can remove this and then put here the dob and then put here the status okay and then put the email all right so that is our database creation okay so that is our table creation so i put also uh the bracket that close of course okay here at last like this okay 
so you can see let us revise our SQL properly again create table if not exist and then we put there the table name so you open curl bracket and close it here so it's ID ID is equal to integer primary key. I'm not making it auto increment because it's an ID that will be coming from internet so I don't need to uh, manipulate myself so I have to make it to primary key user uh, everything that you see there it's just nothing but a string and then I make sure that I put here my last comma I don't make sure that there's no comma at the end and then I open color close this bracket that I opened here so that is our SQL for uh, creating a table the next thing that we're going to do right now is now to do what is now to run that SQL okay it's not to run that SQL okay where are we we're in uh, we need table here okay so we're going to try to run that SQL so to run the SQL which I just simply write I want to put it in between try I go ahead and say await db dot execute remember i have here the database so it's a db dot execute let me put here some variable a boolean that you're going to call is success and by default it's going to be what false okay so we come back here we just write try and catch so you just write try and catch so inside the try you put the db db dot what dot execute and then you pass the sql so if it reaches here we make the 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 the, the is successful true so if it fails we go ahead and do what and uh, let's make this one uh, a string by the way i'm going to show you the technique that i'm going to use let's make this one a string this one is string let it return a string so if it is successful, we shall return an empty string. If it does not, if it does not succeed, then we shall return uh, an an error as it's explained. So I can return here. Fail to open what the database. Uh, so there we shall return this. So let's remove this. So in case in case it it, it is successful, so we are going to return an empty error an empty array. Okay. So if it is successful. We are returning an empty uh, an empty string. So if it is not successful, we are going to do what to return we return the error. So it's a failed to create database and then here we say a dot string. So you get here somewhat some reason and that's what you return. So on the other side, we shall just be waiting. So if it returns an empty thing, then we know it was successful. If it, it, it failed to Create the database to return something that failed, and then you shall know that it shall not return an empty string, and then you shall know something went wrong. All right, so that's the technique that we shall use to create a database. I mean the table. So you can pause the video and look at this very carefully so you can understand it. All right, so let's come back here. Await init table, and then you put db like that. So after doing that, after making sure that um, it executes it, here, let's go back here. We are still on save. Okay. So after making sure that this one has finished, so it means that uh, when we are waiting here, we have to uh, just wait, like um, uh, just put here some string. Uh, maybe I can say table uh, results equals to await and then we initialize the table like this okay so if it is the if it is not successful if it is not empty i return back whatever has failed so this whoever will call this guy of saving will also wait and see if they are sending him back the empty string if they don't send them back the empty string we shall know something went wrong and that's what we shall display so that's a technique that i'm showing you so i'm checking if the response that is coming from the table that is initializing if it is not empty, I return from there. So I know that everything, something did not go right. All right, so proceed. So after init, so the next thing you're going to now do what? To insert into the database. However, according to our logic, when we are saving, it will be good that we first delete. We first delete whatever is there because it, is only, only, it will only be one user who is logged in. So it will be a good idea to first delete whatever is there and then we insert uh the new data okay so let's work on the logic of deleting all 
so to delete all we're going to do that okay so i'm going to put here some static function here i'm going to call it delete all okay i'm going to call it delete all okay so i initialize the database if uh, the database is okay i check if the database is open after i go ahead and delete i say await db dot delete so this small simple function that i've created here it will be able to do delete everything for us so i'll come back to our saving so here after we've initialized the table properly we've initialized the database properly we initialized the table properly it has no error error then we shall go ahead and delete everything that is what that is in this uh table okay then after deleting everything then we're going to do what to insert to insert the user who is logged in okay so this is how you insert the user you just simply say okay so to insert the user you just simply say db.insert and then you put the table name and then you put dot to json and then you put the algorithm so this is what i've done here so i just simply say so to insert the user i surround it with the try and catch and say db dot i mean db dot insert okay so after deleting everything let me even put here a wait by the way because it may take time so let's put here some uh, future static so it's going to be static we begin with that future we begin with future static future static void okay to not return anything but it may take time you know you see it already have a wait here so you have to wait for everything to delete okay so after making sure that everything is deleted then you say db.insert and then you put the, the, the table name and then you put the um, the what the the to json so this to json you should have created it i think we created it previous time where we convert the data of the user i mean of the of the object to json as you can see here then here it is delete all okay then you say delete all okay sorry okay then you say db.insert and then you put uh table.name table name which is a constant that we define there and then you put the to json so it will convert to json and decide those things so you can go ahead and specify the algorithm so it's a conflict algorithm then you can put for example replace so in case it finds another record it will replace there but whoever this is now unnecessary because on top there we've already deleted what we've already deleted everything so you can even get rid of this algorithm so if it successfully execute it will be able to reach this line we shall return empty if it fails then we shall know that something not go right we shall return an error so when we are calling this method we shall go ahead and await and wait for it uh, to return for us something and if it everything is okay we we know that everything it will turn empty string if it is uh, does not it's not okay to turn back uh whatever this data so let's go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and save so i'll come back to our uh, registration screen so this is a place so if the id is greater than zero i'll go ahead and save okay so I say maybe a uh, string saving response equals to await user dot save. Okay. So let me go ahead and put whatever has come. Let me just go ahead and say put whatever has come. So if if it does not return back anything, then we shall know uh, that everything is all right. So let me just put it between these two. Okay. So let me remove this. So if it returns something, then you shall know it will be returning a complaint. So I hope that you've understood it. We are going to go back and re-explain it. So let me come here to console and try to see what is happening. Save. Try to create. Perfect. You see, it is not returning anything. Then it means that everything is all right. Okay. So let's go ahead and check. So let me go back to what? To the save. Okay. And explain it. So let me explain everything again for one more time. So this is database.init db that we are getting the database so here we say away dot get utils dot get db so if I press control and click here you'll see it's nothing but this function that is starting the what the database okay so after doing that 
uh, insulating the data bed, the next thing we're insulating the table. So you can see here, we're giving this table a table name and then we're expecting a, a, a string. So if everything is okay, we shall it should return for us an empty string. If something is all right, should return for us what uh, what went wrong. And then I do that. I create the, the table by writing this SQL. You can pause the video and look at this SQL. So after initializing the table, the next thing that we're going to do, uh, we're going to db.insert. However, this is uh, a problem. What if the table does not exist? Okay, you see this is uh, some kind of, of a problem. So I have also here to do some await and init the table uh, because the table might not be existing. Dot. I mean, sorry, is this init table? Where is it? I'll decode it here. Okay, so first initialize table. So you can surround this one between try and cache, by the way. Because they may throw an error if they are called first time before the table is created. Okay, so that is it. Okay, so that is it. I think that's it. So you delete the tables. If they, I mean, you delete everything in the table. If there is a, a what? A new user that is trying to log in it's because we know that in this table literally we shall always have only one person who is currently logged in so that's why we are trying to delete everything before we do what before uh we save their data so after doing that okay the next thing we try and catch we try to db insert and then we insert they say we put the table name and then say put dot to json so this one will convert the act current object to JSON and then we put the conflict algorithm. And then we turn empty if it reaches here, and then if it is failed, we return an, an error that failed like this. So like this you'll be able to do it to achieve that. Alright, let's go ahead and now do some somewhat some uh, so let's come back to our our registration. So this is when you log in. So we shall just simply say if if is uh if is empty uh if it is not empty we go ahead and display the snack error and we can even put in the error message eh? so in case it is not empty we go ahead and put the error message so just simply say error message equals that and then remember to set state okay so that is how we update Okay, so that's it. So let's go ahead and put this one now in its right position. So I'll just cut this the way it is here. And then I come and put it down. Okay. And put it down. Okay. So. Down, 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 down here. Okay. Put it here. Okay, so if ID is greater than zero. Ah. I think we've already done this one, so I can remove just this here. So you can see I'm just putting it down after the, in the, the bottom of submit. Eh? Okay, so here I toast. So I check if the response is uh, if the response is not null. You see, if the response is not null, I go ahead and display the error, and then I also return from there because here I'm trying to save. Is here I'm trying to save so if the response from the saving is not empty so if it's not an empty string I go ahead and display that whatever has come as what as an error so that is the technique so if it is reaches there I will know that it's successful so I'm going to get back the user to the very home page okay I'm going to get back the user to the home page like to the home page so that home page is the one that will be working on the logic of seeing the person who is logged in and the one who is logged in and then they it redirects them. So to do this, we just simply do get off all names. I mean get off all named and then specify specify the name. I hope I have uh in my menu I have the name of home. Let me see if we have the name route. Okay. 
okay this is called menu route do you have the very main let's call okay let's just call this one menu route you can call it home okay let's call it menu route okay so you can have even the splash screen the screen that will be changing if someone is logged in or not okay should we create it now um but we shall change this menu route to that so let's say maybe call it main route instead of menu route okay so let's just call it menu route so you can change it later okay so i'll come here and put you should go to menu route so it should start so you put get off all so the user should not be able to do what to come back this screen get off all named so your named should also be existing in the main uh under routes like this you should have uh, your your class should be able to be registered here you should have a re class registered here under routes in order for you to reference it here i hope you can see that you can pause the video and see that all right so that's it uh, that's it uh, let's go ahead and try to register now of course the email already registered let's put now number two everything should be fine create an account you see welcome the name of the person welcome the name of the person okay so that gives us an assurance that we have logged in a user so you can even test by trying to fetch this user from what uh from the database okay uh for example you may include the logic of saying that if the user is logged in they should not access the the what the the registration screen okay so you can do that as well all right so the registration screen is done Let's proceed to the login screen without wasting time. Okay, so I'll proceed to the login screen. I'll go ahead and um, duplicate this main screen, registration screen. I'll just duplicate it. And then I just change this one to login screen. I just copy and paste it. That's what I did. Then I come here, press all of them as a control f okay just select all of them say control f alt and enter then paste there your new class name you see alt and enter like that then you'll be able to multi edit okay so let's add this to our home menu okay so shall come to our main menu where is it we're first doing everything then we shall connect them all at once I think that's a good approach. So main menu let us put you on top here. Login screen. There you go. Alright, so now when someone clicks here, they should be able to take it to be taken to the login screen. Alright, so though we did not design this thing properly, it's not telling us whether we are logging in or we are registering. That's not a very good design for sure. Oh, but you can improve it. Alright, so let's go to the login screen. Sorry, but I'd put here the long screen. It's supposed to be login screen like this. Let's come back. Okay, so save login screen. There we go. So I'll go ahead and put first name. So there is first name. I'll just search it. I'm going to remove those ones. So let's just do something simple that shows that someone is logging in. Uh, I don't know whether I should put it on uh, be below the the icon. Let's put it here. Just uh, some effects text. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Let me just say some text. Okay. And then say login like this. Okay. Let's put just some size height like this. Login. Just like simple like that. So someone should know what they are doing on that page. Let's do it on a registration screen as well to avoid confusion. Uh, so come where there is what? Where there is a logo. And then we add register below the logo. Okay, so say maybe create account like this. So someone should know what they are doing. So come back to the login log logic. So we're going to remove almost everything. We're just going to leave the email and the what and the password. 
so let's keep restart removing first name remove uh, last name remove uh, email address leave uh, phone number we remove shall be logging using the email only uh, company name remove is the login screen and then we have currency that shall be using in this company we leave that and then the password of this that one will be required so if i save that is a what a simple login screen so instead of putting here create account i'm going to put here login login just put let's put login as simple as that all right so there we go so there we go so now in the section of um so this is validation it can help us on validation of course uh, yeah so let's go ahead and validate uh, we remove thing that we don't need in validation click here uh, so first name we don't need it uh last name we don't need it just need password and email uh, okay so email is okay phone number we don't need it okay and then uh, password we need it so okay so we are here in validate where is it in the validate so it will first validate for us the username and password and then after it calls the submit button i mean the submit function so in submit we're just going to say submit two things email and password so let's remove what we don't need uh we'll remove what you don't need first of all let's go to uh let's okay let's first remove what you don't need so company id whatever currency we don't need those things um uh -huh, so uh, what are we going to submit we're going to submit just username and password okay so do you have username uh yeah, okay so we're going to do it to go ahead and let's see how we collect the username Okay, so here you're collecting them by adding them to this user object. Okay, so that is okay. Let's go back. So here, instead of just uh, passing the whole of it, you can as well just pass what they need. Okay, which is uh, email and password. So let's check the the, the naming conversion in um, in what in. Uh, okay in postman here's postman so inverter track where is it inverter track online so how do you log in so I'll make this to be active then come how do you log in authentication we log in by providing what by providing email and password as they are stated okay so also going to log in by providing email and password as they are stated here that is very good so now everything is all right so we can just pause the video and look at things very carefully you see everything is what is all right we can even remove this we don't need it so just pass this anyway. so the only thing that's remaining is now to put the correct url of login which is stroke auth stroke uh, login like this okay so everything is all right so it's almost the pretty the same pretty same so here yeah, everything is okay everything is okay check the errors check the errors check the errors check the codes now how we already discussed all these uh so let's see first comment before uh they redirect me so i can first comment always do that before they redirect you so i save so i come here and put uh john at gmail.com john black i got to strike john and then password is 4321 click login you see welcome john so it means that you have successfully logged in someone i hope you can see that okay so it has successfully logged in someone uh, i mean get the information of someone so 
I'll just go ahead and remove what and remove this comment so it can be okay so I'll remove the comment so it can be able to start immediately after someone logs in so here I've already I saved the user you see all these things I've saved the user right so I've saved your time and things that you'd be doing in that time so I use, I I if I go ahead and click on login list right now if I click on login set a process and then boom it will bring me back to the what to the home page meaning that we have also finished implementing the login screen all right in the next lecture we are now going to dive deeper how do you manage the logged in user how do you update them now what can they do in the system and the different roles that are going to do in the system so that in the next lecture that's what we're going to begin from now adding the real stock up to the rest of the project so make sure that you don't give up make sure that you don't uh miss the classes see you in the next lecture we are going to make it much more interesting by making it interacting with the web make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel as well see you and the next lecture goodbye So... Sure.